Welcome back guys, as promised, here's the video of the design, here's my cross cart I've been working on, I'll just show you guys around a little bit. So as you can see, still needs a lot of work, a lot of tweaking, but uh, the frame is there, you see now I'm probably gonna raise this up a little bit more. I don't like that corner it makes there. I don't know, maybe I'm gonna go with straight bars across there instead of the X. Make it a little bit easier. But yeah, as I said, this part of the frame can be any shape you want. The important part are these two main frame rails these four upper rails <coughs> and the base plate there it is so as you can see I made it so you can uh, fit your differentials in there those are the base plates secondary base plates you see how the hand joint bolts in. The lower uh, passenger plate, I guess. <laughs> and you can see how all the reinforcements go around. <coughs> We're still going to be adding two pipes to spread the loads here and then probably one pipe going across okay so as you can see those arms are pretty long I think the bottom arm from this point to this point is 700 millimeters so as you can see it looks a little bit wonky, right? Well, everything has a reason, let me assure you that. So this A-arm is actually flat, is parallel to the ground. This one is kind of rotated backwards. If you see, it's not bolted in the same... Ooh. It's not bolted at the same height. This one is lower than this one, and that is what's going to give us our anti-dive geometry, so that when we break, the torsional forces of the brake on the A-arm won't push it down. It'll actually push the A-arm <coughs> up, sorry, down, um, giving us our anti-dive geometry. This will just stop the car from diving when we brake and basically the same thing at the back but the opposite way around to give us our anti-squat geometry so that when we accelerate the back end doesn't want to squat down the torsional forces of the of the acceleration will actually keep the AR in line and as you can see I made them so that they're completely symmetric <clears throat> these bottom A arms are all the four equal so that for spare parts you're only gonna need to bring with you one spare part and that's it yeah one spare lower control arm for every single corner of your car and same thing for the upper control arm these are mirror images of each other so you can actually just flip it upside down and use it either for the front or for the rear. Um, so that means that you only need to bring with you one bottom A-arm and one top A-arm. And you're set even if you hit a big rock, you hit something, you're, you know, usually it's only one side that uh, it's going to be really bad. So you just change over that side 
and your sweet. Same thing goes for the knuckles. The knuckles are going to be all the same. So you only need to bring, basically, if you bring all of this assembly with you and you have an accident and you want to repair it, it's going to be as easy as unbolting four bolts, undoing the drive shaft and swapping over to a new air arm. As you can see, there's a relief in this pipe to accommodate the engine since we're going to be going with a longitudinally mounted three cylinder out of a speed triple. And yeah, that's pretty much how it goes. Um, the, <coughs> the angle here is quite important because that's what's going to give us our camber gain on um, on our uh, suspension travel. So the more this A arm, top A arm, is smaller than the bottom one, the more camber gain we're going to achieve when uh, we go top to bottom. Let me do that again, see if I can do it better. Yeah, so you see how it's gaining camber as it goes down, but all the way through our, uh, um, what's it called? Through our range, you know, we're going to be exactly where we want up until the very end, but that's not feasible at where the... Um, you know, the ball joints are going to bottom out before that. But uh, we get reasonable good camber gain. You know, it's kind of static up until you get to really high angles. And that's given because, given from the length of that arm, the longer you make it, the more stable it will become for a longer, for the, for a longer travel. There is an error that I made into this uh, knuckle and that is the position of the tie rod this tie rod as you can see oop, just disappeared there we go I need to put it actually a little bit further up as you can see to get zero bump steer what you want to do is take a line that goes from the middle of your ball joint on your uh, the lower ball joint on your knuckle goes through the two ball joints on uh, your a arm on your frame that bolt your a arm to your frame and then you will and uh, extend that line out until it goes then you take a line from your uh, top knuckle uh, top, top ball joint of your knuckle and go through the two ball joints on the, bolt the upper A arm on the frame and extend that until it intersects your um, your bottom uh, A arm line and then you take that uh, the tie rod axis and that tie rod axis should meet in the same spot where the upper and lower A arm lines intersect. And as you can see at the moment it doesn't because this is completely flat. This one goes down a little bit since we need to go through those two ball joints. We need to make the median between that and go through that and it's probably gonna it's going to be somewhere around this axis since this is a uh, straight and this was is pointed down a little bit it's going to be somewhere along this axis so you can see how if i raise that a little bit then that will get back in line with uh, the whole system obviously this is at pretty high compression being that it's flat with the frame and we we're probably going to Oops. 
let's revert that. This is probably where the suspension is going to live most of its time. And as you can see, I need to lift that just by the tiniest amount to get these three axes to uh, intersect. And once that happens, that's when we get zero bump steer. So as you can see, a lot of work has gone into this. I'm really proud of it, but I am always open to criticism. I love hearing your guys' opinion about things, and it wouldn't be the first time that you've pointed out something that I completely missed. So please go ahead, don't be scared to criticize um, what I'm doing here, because that's the best way to learn, right? So let me guys, uh, let me know what you think. Please leave a comment, like, subscribe if you think that uh, I'm worthy enough. And I guess I'll see you in the next one. Peace.